Hi, and welcome to ORT1 HVF, Human Vision and Function. My name is Mary Vukisevich, and I'll be taking you through part one, topic four, which is anatomy of the visual pathway. So let's start with understanding what is a visual field. A visual field is an area in space perceived by the eye. How sensitive the eye is in detecting a stimulus will vary throughout the visual field. And in a healthy eye, it depends on the number and the function of the ganglion cell receptive fields at any given point. You can actually map out a person's visual field by determining the boundaries of the field or how sensitive a point anywhere across the field is to light. This technique is called perimetry and it's a technique that we teach orthoptic students as part of their course. The normal visual field in one eye only extends approximately 50 to 60 degrees superiorly, 60 to degrees nasally, 70 to 75 degrees inferiorly and about 90 to 100 degrees temporally. And of course, there will be changes to the extent of the visual field depending on age. So as we age, the visual field uh, shrinks slightly. Information about how we see the world enters both eyes with a great deal of overlap. If you try closing one eye, you'll find that the range of your vision in the remaining eye is mainly limited by your nose and the image that's projected onto your retina can be cut down the middle with the fovea defining the very center. Now by now you should know where the fovea is. It's right within the macula area because you should have already covered the um, component of this series which is about anatomy of the eye. So if we cut the retina down in through the middle through the fovea we essentially are left with two halves of the retina. A left half and a right half. And generally we refer to these as the temporal half, the part near your temple, or the nasal half, the part near your nose. Another thing to be mindful of when we're talking about visual field is that visual images are inverted or flipped upside down and back to front as they pass through the lens of the eye. Therefore, in your right eye, the nasal retina sees the right half of the world while the temporal retina sees the left half of the world. And also it's useful to remember that what you see is divided into the right and left hemifields and each eye gets information from both hemifields. So for every object that you see, both eyes are actually seeing it, but the image will be falling on one nasal retina and one temporal retina. So the question you might ask is why are the retinas divided? Well basically the brain works on a crossed wires system and the left half of the brain controls the right side of the body and vice versa. Therefore the left half of the brain is actually only interested in visual input from the right side of the world. To ensure that the brain doesn't get extraneous information the fibres from the retina will actually sort themselves out into separate right hemifield from left hemifield. Specifically, fibres from the nasal retinas cross over at the optic chiasm, whereas the, from the temporal retinas already positioned to see the opposite side of the world, these fibres do not cross. So this was just a really basic introduction to the visual field. I would like you to take a much closer look at how the visual field is arranged from the eyes all the way over to the occipital cortex. So what I'd like you to do now is watch the next YouTube video by Sam Tapsell, uh, which explains more about the visual field and contains some great illustrations and gives you clinical application of what happens when um, things go wrong across the visual field. Good luck.